All right, first I'm gonna teach you the rules of what is called typography. So typography or font is the type of lettering uh, that designers work with. So what we're first gonna do is create what's called a baseline and I'm gonna use blue to show you the lines that would normally be erased. So all of your guidelines will be erased. So if you're using pencil, right, just remember to draw really, really lightly. So if you're holding your pencil at the tip, uh, if you're holding it at the tip, you're more than likely gonna draw it too dark. Hold it towards the end, just kind of drag it right across the ruler. It should show up pretty light, but it's too light for video. So I'm going to just do this in a different color so you can see. So this is gonna be your baseline. And a base is something that an object sits on top of. So all of your letters, all of your words, are gonna sit right on top of this line. And that's base. That's it. B A S E. Okay, so now what we have kind of like a ground where your letters, letters will sit on top of, we're gonna create a guide uh, so that you know how tall each of your letters is gonna be. So I'm gonna create a guide for capital letters. go. So these are two parallel, parallel lines, lines that will never cross each other. Right? They're both going in the same direction. This is your capital letter height. So we're just going to call it the cap height. All right. We're mostly going to be doing lowercase letters though. So we have to make a guideline in between. It's going to look somewhat like a street because we're doing street art, right? So we're going to stick this somewhere in the middle. I'm going to do a dash line so it looks a bit different. It's not going to be perfect here, but we're going to erase this towards the end. So I'll just get a general idea. So right there, it looks like a street. All right, it's a little bit in the uh, upper region, but that's okay. Different fonts have different proportions. So well, that's right, that's your X. We'll call that X, because if you're going to do a letter X, um, hand about here, so this is going to be your X line. All right, we're going to do some fancy letters. Fancy, fancy letters with our guides, so they will all look perfect and straight across. We're going to do the same font with each letter, so that our word looks like it has some unity to it. Belongs together. Right? Unity is a principle of art, so keep that in mind while you're doing your own style. All right, let's do the word fancy. So we're gonna start with a base. Oh, we don't need a ruler. We're just doing letters. So we're gonna start from a base. It's gonna start with a capital F. Hopefully not what you are going to be getting in this class. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna end at the cap height, so make sure that that's touching, and then the middle of my F I'm going to put at this guideline. Alright, let's do a lowercase a, and a nice fancy a. So this is what's called the bowl, right here. Not that you need to know that, <laughs> but you might, in case you really like typography. Let's do a nice serif. Which is like the tail. It's called the serif. And then the top of my A will reach my X. This is a fancy A. I never make these type of A's. I always just did flat. There. Alright, let's make an N. So to do another word, I can make another guideline for this descending line here, and it's descending because it's going downwards. If I had an uppercase letter 
that would break this cap height, it would be an ascending line up here. Uh, so let's make a guideline for this descender. So it's called. Oh, <laughs> well, this isn't the pen I was using earlier, but this is a graffiti writing pen. Uh, it's acrylic paint. Uh, it's the same color though. Probably would show up better, but uh, it would bleed through. Ascending line. Okay, so now that we know all the rules, uh, let's break them. You need to know them to know how to break them, trust me. Alright, so that one, that word was a little bit boring. I mean, it was fancy, it looked nice. It looked nice and aesthetically pleasing to the eye. Uh, but let's, let's make it a little bit crazy. So we're still gonna have a, a little bit of a structure to the graffiti word, but we're gonna make it look like it's kind of popping out at you. All right, so let's make our baseline, but you know, who says it has to be straight across? Cause we're not trying to make some fancy word that goes in a book or anything like that. This graffiti word, I don't know, you can picture anywhere in the city. So let's do a nice dynamic diagonal line that way. Top. This is your cap height. We'll slant it down like this. Let's make it nice and dramatic though. We wouldn't want to drive on this street. There'd be a lot of traffic jams on this street right here. <laughs> we'll do the X line somewhere in the middle. It doesn't have to be straight across. It could just be whatever which way. Maybe you want it down low, maybe you want it up high. But now you have kind of a guide on whatever kind of font that you want to create. You're kind of making up your own font. Well, font is actually the digital term. Right now it's called a type. It's called a typography. Just a fun fact there. Like font is like Times New Roman, Helvetica. And we're gonna make our own type. What's your type? That's So we're going to make the word crazy, so let's start at this cap height, it's the letter C, but I'm going to work with pencil. Yes, you will notice that I hold my pencil a little bit different than most people, probably a lot of people. Um, I think I get more control this way. I'm also left-handed, so just, I don't know, always been a little bit of a rebel in that field. Um, and I'm holding my pencil up like this, one, because you can see it, two, because I tend to just smudge everything that I just wrote. Okay, so let's do the word crazy. So start at the top here. I guess if you're a rebel, you could start from the bottom or kind of both and meet yourself in between. So let's start with the very first element I'm going to talk about, which is line. It's one of my very favorite elements. It's also the most simple. Well, it could be the most simple, because you usually start with lines when you're drawing. Uh, so I've already got my street, I've got my baseline, my X height, and my cap height. So let's do line in kind of a graffiti style. I'm going to start in pencil first. I'm going to be inspired kind of like cursive, but make it a little bit more geometric and jagged. So there's going to be my L for line, got my I, and I'll make one of these E's. So I know that it fits now, even though this is not going to be my end of style. Alright, so I already started making an, a serif of this L. That's what that's called, kind of like a leg. I'm gonna use very, very straight lines because we're focusing on lines, although 
Lines don't always have to be straight. So we've got straight, some wavy, some jagged. Uh, so the key of using line if you're trying to make it interesting is to add a variety or different kinds. Let's do a curved line for up the eye then. So I think serifs really add some interest, a little bit of flair. And for my serifs, they all kind of look the same, kind of triangular shapes to them. This E is going to be curved. It's kind of did straight, curve, straight, curve to add a little bit of the variety. See where I smudged this a little bit, so I might just fill that in to cover that up. Because, well, mistakes are okay, but I want to make it look like I did it on purpose. Fill that in, so that kind of looks like a thick line. One thick line there. So maybe sometimes I want to use an even thicker line, I'll use a bigger sharpie. It'll be faster. Interesting. Okay. I think for this letter, I'm just going to add a line in the middle. So use a variety of lines. Some, maybe one variation is thick, one variation is thin. Uh, maybe in this end I'll use like a zigzag or dragon. Design in the middle. And this way, I'm kind of using line to make a few shapes, it looks like. Lines in the middle, just so we kind of have some unity. They look like they belong to the same word here. It's kind of an interesting balance to have variety and, and unity in the same picture. There we go. It looks a little bit interesting than if you were just a right line. Okay, and of course you would erase the baseline, the X, and the cap height at the end. So there's line. Okay, I already talked a little bit about shapes, so let's focus on that next. So we'll do a curve line for my base. That. So light, which is a good reminder for you to draw light. Because you would erase this. Alright, that will be my overall shape. But I've got just the regular writing or lines. I'm gonna do some bubble letters to add some shape to them. And usually shapes can be geometric. And geometric ones have names like square, triangle, rectangle, circle, or they can be organic and they don't have names. Well, they do have names. I'm gonna name this one Bob. <laughs> but it's not a normal, normal name. Okay. So we'll write Geo Let's focus on organic shapes for the bubbles. So you can do this one of two ways. You can kind of circle around the entire letter. I'm gonna do it here. And then erase this line in the middle. 
Or you can use geometric lines. Uh, you can use ovals. Might create kind of a more balloon texture. Let's try that one with the A. And that diamond again just so that we're consistent with these. That's our unity for this one. The diamond shapes. You can do this without the guideline and just draw the S by itself. But it's easier to do the guideline so you know each letter fits within this street shape here. All right, and that's shape. I'm gonna be a little bit more geometric. So I'm going to, instead of circle each letter, I'm gonna add a straight line to all the sides. So I'm making a rectangle all the way around this. Almost. For the O, I guess I could do a rectangle. Two. Even though I originally just drew a circle or oval. So let's actually focus on this F. So I'm going to draw a normal F down here without any guidelines just so you can see it better. I'm kind of making some shortcuts here. I didn't draw the F first. You don't have to, it's just to help. Alright, so for each corner, I'm going to draw a diagonal line and if it, that diagonal line happens to cross through your letter you don't have to draw it. So for this corner I'm going to draw a diagonal line and maybe I'll make it a different color. For this corner right here I'm going to draw a diagonal line. This is kind of an inverse corner I'm still going to draw a diagonal line. This goes through your letter right so you don't have to draw it is your letter so you wouldn't have to draw it so you don't have to draw one here or here all right now I'm gonna connect all of these diagonal lines so I'm gonna connect connect this one's just gonna go straight down So that kind of gives it a 3D shape, like you're looking at the side of that letter. Let's make it a little bit darker. So I'm doing these little slanted rectangle shapes. So you definitely use shape to create the illusion of form. Although this form looks three-dimensional, right? three-dimensional we're gonna use something called value so value is shading a shadow would hit in there we're gonna talk about that next since it came up so perfectly
Okay, so let's review. We've got our baseline. You've got our cap height. And we have our X height. Now, for the purpose of time, let's just do the letter V. So, we're going to start with line. So, just a stroke. And we're going to use line. Close that up to create a shape. three-dimensional version of shape is form. So I'm going to do some diagonal lines there. Connect, connect, connect. All right, now we have a 3D looking letter V. To make it even more 3D looking, we're going to use some value, which is shading from dark and light. shade starting dark moving light of course you can blend go back in that's some midtones I'm using kind of a circular motion so you don't see the pencil mark as much let's pretend that our light source is coming from the top Maybe there's a little highlight in there. So we're going to draw the V, but upside down. Next is texture. So you may have noticed my baseline, my cap height, and my X height were a little bit uh, funky. They weren't straight. They weren't exactly round. They were more geometric. I have more app overlapping in my letters. That's probably a more advanced uh, way to go, but it looks kind of cooler. I have some like lowercase letters that hit the cap height, but then I balanced out this lower with this like miniature E, but I still followed this line right here when I did my original drawing. Um, I already decided I was going to do some drip marks underneath the letters, so I started in pencil and when, when I went with Sharpie I decided where I wanted those drip marks to kind of be. So you can correct a little bit with the Sharpie. Um, you don't have to, you can go exactly with what you already did in pencil. Uh, but I always find myself correcting lines that I already did. So in the middle of texture, um, I think it's easiest to think about kind of wobbly lines for the drip marks. I pretend like I'm a little kindergartner that's trying to write the letter W for the first time. Some drip marks are longer than others, right? If we made all the drip marks the same height, that would not really look that natural. So we're adding a variety of lengths, um, to this texture so it looks more natural and not so much like a design so I'm gonna do a crazy double over here crazy W over here maybe you only want to do one drip in some areas where you would start kind of skinny and then as the raindrop or goo mark gets big uh, gets bigger towards the bottom because gravity is pulling it so adding some texture now this Texture is how something feels. This texture is kind of gooey or goopy. And in real life, uh, it doesn't it doesn't feel that way, I promise you. So we're creating the illusion of texture. We're creating a visual texture. Um, if you were creating a sculpture 
or mixed media or collage. You could use actual texture, uh, like something like sandpaper. Like that's actual texture. It's rough. It actually feels like something other than um, paper. I mean, paper has its own texture of its own, but you're not really purposefully using the texture of paper when you're drawing. Wiggly. I'm doing it quickly, so it kind of looks just like it's flowing, but I am controlling each line. I mean, you could try doing this with your other hand. Maybe it'll be more natural if you do it with your less dominant hand. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. I would experiment, try it out. I'm getting a different kind of shape, which is kind of cool. It's not really what I'm going for, but it looks different than what I would normally do. Yeah. I mean, that would work too. And that's texture. We could add some other textures too, like let's do some scales, which are like letter U's. And then in the second row, you do this letter U in between these two. You could do like a brick shape in the background, some rectangles. Maybe if you're wanting your word to look like it's on a brick wall, you can add some texture that way. have some wood grain. So wood grain usually has some vertical lines, unless your boards are going horizontal, and they usually have like a knot in the wood. So that's like a board. There would be some nails in that board. But whatever you do, don't make it look too perfect because it's out in nature. And then you want it to look natural. So I'm gonna add like some, ooh, some like cracks maybe. Some jagged lines for cracks. See, I'm using line to create texture. You can use the elements uh, to build other elements and to build principles, which we'll talk about later in a different video. Next element is going to be color, as I write in black and white. Okay, <laughs> well, so we've got the Roy G. Biff, right, which is red, orange, that kind of looks like a red orange, yellow, that's the Roy, G is for green, Biv, so we've got blue, indigo, and violet. All right, so generally, the Roy's, the beginning of the rainbow, those are the warm colors. Those are the colors of fire or lava. And then this side of the rainbow, um, is they're usually the cooler colors. Like if you were to draw water or an ice cube, you'd usually use the color blue. So we're gonna do that in this graffiti letter. All right, let's cheat a little bit. Yeah, I guess I'll still use guidelines. So you got our baseline, got our cap height. <laughs> it kind of looks like a rainbow the way I did it. Okay. Let's cheat a little bit and just stick to the Sharpie. Let's do one section cool. One section warm. Uh, you know what? Since this starts with the beginning of a rainbow warm, we'll do this side warm and this side cool. We'll do it opposite of the picture. <laughs> Confuse you a little bit. Green can be either way. If there's more yellow added to the green, right? If there's more yellow 
than blue and the green, then it's kind of a warm color. If there's more blues, if there are more blues in the green, then it's kind of a cool color. I think green can go either way. This particular green looks a little bit warm to me. We'll have that as more in the middle. All right, so let's start with the flames of this letter C. So with flames, it's kind of like a lowercase j or an uppercase j. Either way. So we've got maybe some some fish hooks. You can think of it that way too. So I'll just go pretty quickly here. 